So if you've been running Discord for any reasonable length of time, you probably know that what you're looking at right now isn't actually the official client. So what this is, is actually a rewrite of Discord in GTK. So why in the world would you want to use this? Well, the official Discord client is an Electron app, and being an Electron app, it's known for being a RAM hog and a CPU hog because Electron is basically just running a Chrome instance in the background. So being a GTK app, it's going to be way less RAM heavy and way less CPU intensive, which on lower end hardware can actually be a major plus. Now on my system, I don't actually notice much of a difference. It's using half as much RAM, but I've got so much extra anyway that for me, it doesn't actually matter. But if you only have have four gigs or eight gigs of RAM, it actually can be a really big deal. And the other reason why you might want to run this is the fact that it's a GTK app. So because it's a GTK app, it's going to use your GTK theme. So it's going to fit into your system theme with no extra work. So you don't have to go and modify extra files. Basically, you go and install the app, it'll run your GTK theme, and it will just look as the rest of your GTK apps do. So I don't think this is intended to give you a custom Discord experience, so it should be pretty easy to get used to, but it does have some weird design choices about it. So for example, on the right hand side here in the official client, you would see the server member list. But for whatever reason, in this client, it's going to be under this hamburger menu and in the details tab. And you can also see the channel description here as well, instead of it being up the top here. I don't know why it's like that and the channel description isn't up here or why the member list isn't on the side here because as you can see you have this menu on the left hand side so clearly there's a way to do menus like this but for whatever reason the developer decided to put it in this menu here. Now if you go and click on a name it will give you a bit of detail about the person. You can't see the accounts they've connected to their discord account or their mutual friends and mutual servers but you can at least see their role. So that's at least something. So let's go out of this. And if you want to go and see a bit of account information, normally that would be down the bottom here. But once again, this is another one that's in this hamburger menu here. And as you can see, we have my name and a bunch of other little things as well. So there's one problem I have with this, and that's the fact that this was clearly designed with GNOME in mind. So this entire bar up here is actually the status bar. So if you go and say click this button up here, it's going to do this like pseudo full screen, but because I'm in a tiling window manager, it doesn't actually do anything too productive. So if I go into full screen mode, as you're going to see, we lose all of that information up the top here. So we actually have to be in tiling mode to get access to this menu right here and this menu over here, as well as the channel name up the top. So obviously this was designed with a floating window manager in mind. It's not a big deal. I can just run this in tiling mode, but it is something that I do want to see addressed at some point. As for doing the regular Discord chat stuff, most of it works just fine. So for example, if I start typing in at, it's going to bring up a list of people I can tag. If I press colon, it's going to bring up a list of the emotes once I start typing in some letters. So we could say, select this one right here. We also have a list of emotes and a list of emojis, but for whatever reason, it's split up in a weird way. So if I go and click on this symbol down here, it'll bring up a list of server emotes. So I can go to another server and then select the emotes there. And as you're going to see, we have different emotes over here. So that works just fine. But if you want to send an emoji, they're not actually in the emote list. To get an emoji, you have to go and right click on this menu here and click on insert emoji. And it brings up a list of emoji. I have no idea why this is in a separate menu and not in that menu as well, like it is in regular Discord. I presume this is probably a default GTK component. So that's probably why it's split off. You can also go and send multi-line messages, so I can type some stuff in here, shift enter, type some more stuff, shift enter, type some more stuff, so on and so forth. Multi-line messages clearly work just fine. And we can also go and attach a file by clicking the file icon down here, and then going and selecting a file with the GTK file selector, and all of that works as you would expect it to work. And for editing or deleting messages, there's actually two ways to go about doing it. So the first one is if you have a timestamp like this, you can go and right click anywhere in the box and it will work just fine. So we can go and delete a message or edit a message. Works perfectly as you'd expect. Now, as for a message like this where the timestamp is off to the left, you have to actually go and right click on the timestamp. I don't know why it's set up like that. It's not so you can just right click anywhere in the box. As you can see, it didn't work that second time. For whatever reason, it's just on the timestamp. I presume there's a design reason for this, but I'm also going to assume that it's probably a bug. Off to the left-hand side, as you can see, animated server remotes are working as you would expect them to. 
any servers that actually have notifications in them, it does give you a little notification dot. It doesn't tell you how many notifications are in that server, but you can at least see that there are some notifications there. Now, if you want to go and open up an image, basically it works the same way as regular Discord. So let's say we click on this image here, it's going to bring it open into a pop-up window rather than something sitting over the chat window. And if we want to go and open it up in our web browser, all we have to do is go click this button up here, and as you're going to see, works as you'd expect it to. Now, you can't go and right click on this and get a link to the image or anything like that. Basically, all you can do from this window is just go and click up here. And if we want to go and close that, obviously we can just click the X or it's just a regular window. So I'll just quit out of that. Switching between channels, servers and PMs works perfectly fine. So let's go switch to a different channel, switch to another one, switch to a different server, switch into a PM. All of that stuff is working exactly as you'd expect. And from what I see, it's basically as fast as the original client or maybe a little bit quicker. But when it comes to loading messages, that's really going to be up to your internet connection. It's not really going to be a problem with the client itself. So if you're in a server that has not safe for work channels, it won't actually be marked as a not safe for work channel. So normally there would be a little icon in this hash symbol here that would say, okay, this is a not safe for work channel, but this doesn't actually go and show that. So it's not a big deal because most servers will group their not safe for work channels in a not safe for work section. But if your server doesn't, just keep that in mind and don't open up specific channels when you're at work. Now, Another thing is that reactions don't actually work. So even something that already has a reaction on it, like this right here, if you go and try to click that, it's not really gonna do too much productive. I presume that it doesn't really have the API hook set up for that. Sometimes it will show the number has actually changed, but it doesn't actually go and call anything in the Discord API. Changing this doesn't actually do anything. So let's set it to say, do not disturb. And if we go and click up here again, as you can see, we still have a green ring. And if I go over to the official client, as you're going to see, nothing's actually changed over here. I still have a green dot here. So I'm still set to online mode. It doesn't seem to actually work. So once again, I feel like the button is here to do it, but there's no API hook set up for that. So as is pretty common with these third-party clients, you don't have the ability to use voice channels. I don't know if there even is one that does support them. There might be if someone knows about one, feel free to let me know in the comments section, but I've never actually run into one that does have support for that. And also, unless you're using bot commands to do your server administration, there is no way to do server administration from this except for, you know, deleting a message. That's pretty much all you can do. Anything else can't actually be done, so you can't say kick users or ban users or anything like that. So if you're the sort of person who just uses Discord for text chat, there's no real reason why you can't actually go and use this. Most of what you're going to want to do is already supported. And if you want to do things like quote replies or marking something as a spoiler, you just have to write out the syntax for it yourself. There's no easy way to go and say, okay, I want this part of the text to be a spoiler, but if you want to mark it, isn't it just like two bars or something like that? I think that's how you send a spoiler. I don't remember exactly. It's been a while since I've had to write it out myself. And the way the login is done for this is the same way as most of these third party clients. So if we go and quit out of this and try to bring it back open, basically it's gonna prompt you for your authorization token. So go watch my previous video on six court if you don't know how to do that. Basically, you just get the token, put it into this bit right here, and then click log on. Now, the other option is using an extra application called Discord Login, which will basically let you go and log in with your Discord credentials. And this is the GitHub page for Discord Login, which is by the same guy who made Sixcord and also who made the application we're looking at today. So basically, all you're going to have to do is go and download the application, make sure it's in your path, and then when you actually go and open up GTK Cord, just use the Discord Login button, and then it will let you log in with your Discord credentials and it will go and grab the token for you. So this seems to be a completely usable Discord client. And if you just want the regular Discord experience, you don't want to do it from a terminal or anything like that, this might be a pretty good option to choose. Now, personally, I use Discord to do my podcast, so I actually need to have the voice chats. But if I didn't need that, this would actually be something I would really consider using. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Corbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Montaza, Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nephites, Begin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon and subscribe star, my coin tree, and all of that sort of stuff. And I've also got my podcast, Tech Over T, available on Library and YouTube. And the audio version is available anywhere you listen to audio podcasts. And 
This channel is also available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute as well if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.